as we prepare for our call to worship. Coming from Psalms 24, verse 1, and verses 9 and 10. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Let us continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. If someone would like to know why, it's because God will see you through. At this time, we prepare for our opening song. Amen. Oh, hold on. God will see you through. stand to read our scripture 
coming from the book of Revelations, chapter 2, beginning at verse 2, down through verse 7. Revelation, the second chapter, beginning at the second verse. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience. And for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have something against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I've read Revelation, the second chapter, verses 2 through 7. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, it's again that we call on thy holy and thy precious name. We just ask you now to just lean thine ear unto us that you may hear thy servant's prayer. Touch us right now as you see fit. You know our needs ever before we ask. Touch the sick and the shut in. Touch the bereaved families everywhere. Touch those who are careless, and unconcerned but Lord we ask you touch the body of believers known as Star of Hope original Free Will Baptist Church touch each member each officer each deacon trustee and then touch us all together in one band of Christian love Lord we ask you to touch the one that's going to stand and declare thy word on today that it might be a word for us a word that will take us deeper into thy word. Lord, just have your way and let your precious will be done. We count these things done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We thank each one that is joining in with us today. We stand to welcome you, amen, to our worship service, amen, wherever you may be, wherever you are, we welcome you as you have joined in with us on this day. May something be said, amen, that will spark you on today by way of God's word. We welcome you. We are located at 2834 Dow Rumpel Street in the great city of Sanford, North Carolina. We welcome you, you, and certainly you. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you is our prayer. By way of announcements this morning, We do ask all our members to please put it on your calendar. May 15th 
will be our virtual and face-to-face -face mid year session. Amen. We certainly have a designated number that may attend. So certainly if you would like to attend on May 15th, certainly see me to certainly let us know. Our very own Elder Alexander Holmes will bring our mid-year message. Also doing our mid-year, uh, we have our scholarship pageant. Our contestant or representative is Wayne McCord III. We do ask that all that can and will to please pledge or give a donation toward this cause. Our students have benefited greatly from the scholarship fund. Let us give back, amen, to which have been a blessing to many of our conference children. As I jokingly said on last week, Amen. The stimulus check is coming. Amen. Put a little something back. Amen. For our scholarship fund. Also, beginning on March the 29th through April the 4th, the Willie D. Hammonds Ministerial Alliance will have a Holy Week services. All services will be virtual. On Monday night, the host church John, Pastor John McNeil and New Beginning. Tuesday night, the host church, Pastor Paul Tate and Mount Pisgah Lee. Wednesday night, Pastor Thomas McGivery and Mount Zion Lee. Thursday night, Dr. Herman Mars, Sr. and Prevailing Life Ministries. Friday night, host church, Pastor Arthur Simmons, Church of God. And on Sunday morning, for our sunrise service, we'll be at New Zion Missionary Baptist Church and our sunrise message by our president of the Alliance, Reverend Douglas Watterson. We do ask that you continue to do the things that keep us safe, which are the three W's, wear your mask, Watch your distance and wash your hands. And we do encourage all those that have not to please uh, seek to get your vaccination. Amen. That we may uh, help to curtail this pandemic. Amen. It's word time. Amen. And after this next selection, the next voice that you shall hear will be none other than our very own associate elder Alexander Holmes. We thank God for him and Sister Teresa Holmes on this morning. And there is a word from the Lord. Whatever you need, God's got it. If you need love, joy, or peace, whatever you need, he's got everything you need. After the song, the next voice that you shall hear will be none other than our very own Elder Alexander Holmes. <laughs>
please. My Heavenly Father, my Lord and Savior, dear Lord, it's once and again that I stand before you. Lord, I don't stand in any shape, form, or fashion, but dear Lord, I stand in the humblest way that I know how. Dear Lord, with a bowed down head and thanksgiving upon my lips, come Lord, just asking Lord to use me for your glory. My Heavenly Father, use me till you use me up. But then, Lord, when I'm done, Lord, I ask that you return me to a reasonable portion of health and strength. Now, my Heavenly Father, I ask that you get on the weak side of me. Prop me up, Lord, where I might be leaning. Then, Lord, strengthen me where I might be weak. But my Heavenly Father, I ask this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. Our scripture has already been read coming from the book of Revelation, the second chapter, second verse through the seventh. And my title is, Nothing Will Ever Be the Same. And, and I know there are times that we look back on the things and how they used to be and, and how we enjoyed our fellowship. And, and then all of a sudden, COVID showed up. And, and, and we were no longer able to fellowship. We were no longer able to come into the house of the Lord. But nothing will ever be the same. Because of COVID, now we have to do things just a little different. But we still must lean and depend on Jesus. Because he is our foundation. He is our rock. From beginning to end, the book of Revelation is about struggles. What more of a struggle than we are in right now? What more of a struggle are we unable to touch, unable to hug, unable to do the things Christians normally do when they fellowship? This book of Revelation is about struggle. In its opening chapter, John dedicated seven letters from the resurrected Christ to seven churches. Each church had their own set of struggles, but some had deeper problems than others. Hello, somebody. Is that not like our Christians? Is it not like we are pressured on every side the enemy is constantly pushing buttons. He's constantly, constantly telling lies. Is not he constantly raising havoc because he can. But nothing has changed. Where is your faith? In each letter, Jesus urges his people to cling to him and do what they know to be right. The ones who listen, he calls overcomers. Now is the time the church needs to gird up their loins and become overcomers. Now more than ever is the time that we should let this world know that we are the people of God. We are that peculiar generation. We are that royal priesthood. We are that holy nation. Now is the time we need to hold our heads up and walk as though we are walking with the Christ that died on the cross for us. Here, here, my, my first witness here is, is Adam and Eve. You remember Adam and Eve? Lived in the garden. Had to toil and have to do anything. Had a life of luxury. Didn't have to worry about a thing until Eve was beguiled by the snake. And she ate and gave up to her husband and he ate. Afterwards, everything began to fall. That relationship that they had with God, every evening he would come into the garden and, and they would communicate with him. They would walk amongst him and, and, and they had no idea what clothing was. But then after they ate of the fruit, they found themselves when they heard him coming, hiding 
scared, or afraid because they had been given something. He asked them not to bother. He said that was the tree that he didn't want them to eat of. The snake, which is one of Satan's tools, is very good at deceiving us. In this day and time, we must be on guard against him lying to us about the COVID and other things. We must understand that we put our faith in the Lord who died that we might live. So we don't want to fall into any of his traps or any of the ditches that he deals for the Christian people. We must stay focused on where we are going in this land we are in. We're just pilgrims traveling through a barren land. Here, here, we find afterwards, and, 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 and God called him and asked him, Adam, where art thou? I was hiding because I was naked. Before, he knew nothing about whether he was naked or not. But because he defied God's order, now they are kicked out of the garden, and, and they can no longer relax. And, and, and now the woman will, she will have pain through childbearing, and, and the man will have to dig in the dirt so that he can eat. But nothing will ever be the same. Here, here, here are my second witnesses. A, gener a, a generation of people, the Israelites they were, in bondage under the Egyptians, crying for a, a, a deliverer, asking God to give them somebody to bring them out from under this bondage in which they were in. Here, here, they, they cried day and night and, and, and until the Lord decided to send Moses to Egypt to bring them out. Now you must know Moses' story. He was a murderer who ran out of Egypt. And now God is going to send him back. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But if you read the story, you understand that, that, that God hardened his heart so he wouldn't listen to, to Moses. And, and he continuously, and, and God plagued him until he finally turned the people loose. And, and, and if you'll notice, when they got ready to go, the Bible says that God led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So God directed the direction in which he wanted them to go. Here he brings them to the Red Sea. How many times have God instructed us and because we, when our finite mind, could not understand what it was God had for us to do, we began to question the situation. Well, here you find them looking at a trap. Look back and here comes an army and immediately they began to rush over to Moses and have, have you brought us out here to kill us? Was there not enough graves in Egypt? Many times we as Christians must hold our tongue and wait on God because if we wait on God, we'll see the plan in which he has laid out in time for us to go through. We, we find, we find, here they are. Complaining, grumbling, mumbling. Moses tells him, this army that you see today, you will never see them again. Nothing will ever be the same. Here, 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 my, my third and final witness, we, we have a woman, a Samaritan. She goes to the well in the middle of the day because she don't want to encounter any of the village people because she was suspect. And my, my, my notes say this woman was half Jew and half Gentile. That, therefore, she was looked down upon because like many of today's children, you have a mix. You have a black and a white. And, and, and they're ridiculed because they're mixed. Here this woman goes to the well and, and, and just by an encounter she has with Jesus. Jesus asked her to give him to drink. She, she's surprised because the two cultures never 
come together. They never even communicate. Matter of fact, one thought they were better than the other. But now here we find Jesus. And, and, and it's an example to us that, that we ought to not be so quick to look and judge or look and turn our head that we ought to be willing to go part of the way to start a conversation. That way we can at least let somebody know that we know Jesus. Somebody who can fix a situation. Somebody who can help a circumstance. We know him. We know what he can do because he's done it for us. Now, here she is talking to Jesus. Now, 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 she, she talks to Jesus. The conversation goes one way and then another. And then Jesus tells her, whoever drink of this water will thirst again. But the water I give. You will never thirst anymore. How, how many of us can really realize what an opportunity we have? Be, because we know this Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And it's only because he died on the cross and died for us that we would have a right to the tree of life. Now he tells her and she says, give me this water. Jesus said, go get your husband. Now, now here, the door has opened because now she has a decision to make. Should I tell him? Little does she know he already knows. And, and she says, I don't have a husband. He says, no, you don't. You had four and the one you're with now is not yours. And immediately she realizes Something is going on here. But now, I need you to understand this now. She was, didn't want to see the village people, but now after her encounter with Jesus, she runs to the village people. Come see a man who did tell me all about myself and what I did. Come see a man and here the village follows her to see Jesus. Nothing will ever be the same. So I, I don't want you to get excited about hoping because we've got our vaccinations and, and that everything will be as it was. It will never be as it was. It might even be better because we don't know what God has set for us. But I know one thing. He has placed us with a testimony. And that's our drawing, too. We need to let the world know today that there is a man who knows all about our troubles. There is a man who knows in our midnight hour while we shed our different tears that knows what's going on. But there is a man that will lift up our down heads and dry teary eyes. Nothing will ever be the same. Here, here, I, I made it to my text and here John has, has, has been lifted up and, and God has allowed him to look into the future. So now John here is trying to warn the churches about the situations and the circumstances that are going on. Now here John wants this church and it, it's the loveless church. We ought to know this revelation because we have been in it in Bible study. That's why when I, God showed it to me, I said, Lord, but, 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 now, but now this loveless church, here in the second verse, it tells, I know thy works and thy labor. Here you, you, you need to take note on how he tells this church he knows about them. He knows what they're doing. And these are good qualities. And, and, and he says, and thy patience, and how thou tendest not bear them which are evil. So this church seemed to be lining up, doing what they're supposed to do. But now, here if you notice John using, God using John to describe to this church, but now he also tells them the good thing. All right, Stop. hope y'all doing some good stuff. And thou hast tried them. We say they are apostles 
and are not, and has found them liars. You, you, you've examined some folk. You've looked them up and down. You, you placed the word on them and found out that they're not really what they say they are. So the church is really, they, they're lining up. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And as born has patience, and for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. As a church, we're going to face a lot of problems. But what I need you to do is to make sure that you don't fall off this lovely church here, here. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. I need you to wind back when you first received the Lord in your heart. How excited you were to share Jesus with somebody. Oh, oh, do you, you, what church do you go to? Do you know Jesus? How excited you were when you called his name and, and how, how eager you were to present him to other people. But now, the more you begin to tell people about Jesus, the more they begin to shy back. Truth of the matter is, they really wasn't ready to receive what you were trying to give them. So, so now they begin to show on you. They begin to look at you. They, they begin to roll their eyes. So you begin to pull back. But now is not the time for us to pull back. Uh, the Bible tells us if someone don't receive, kick the dust off your feet, move on, but don't stop. Don't back up. Continue to tell people. Continue to tell a dying world about a man named Jesus. Because this is what you're supposed to do. But now we find this church who had a fair reputation from the start, but now has fell away from their first love. They back up. They, they drop their witness and they begin to sit down instead of going out, instead of doing what a church should do. Let us not fall down. Let us not forget. He woke you up this morning and clothed you in your right mind. He fixed it so you're able to move about. This morning I passed by four wrecks. But you know what? I passed safely through. But that's because he let me pass through. So I, I'm going to continue to tell somebody that I know a man that can deliver you. I know a man who can fix that thirst you have that you think you can't get rid of. I know a man who can take that cigarette and just discard it. But, but, but if I don't tell you that I know him, you might not ever seem to know anything about it. Nothing will ever be the same. Here, 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 but thou hast thou that hated the deeds of the Nicolonians, which I also hate. So we find the church still lining up, but has fallen off the love in which they should have. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the church is. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise. And after, after explaining it to them how they lost their first love, and after giving them an opportunity and, and bringing them back, he gives them a promise. I wonder how many understand that there is a promise connected to whatever God has for us to do. But as a church, we are a unit that must continue on regardless to what's going on in the world. We must continue to wave up holy hands. We must continue to praise him in the morning and praise him in the noonday, praise him at night. We must continue to tell somebody about our Jesus. And I'm talking about Jesus, the one who kneeled down in the garden and who, who's, who's, who's sweat was like drops of blood. 
I'm talking about Jesus, the one who picked 12, one was a devil, denied by another, but yet he died that we might live. I'm talking about Jesus, the one in which they marched from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. They beat him all night long, punched in the face, being pulled out by the roof, crowned of thorns on his head. He suffered that we might live. And yet we don't seem to understand. They took my Lord and your God, put a cross on his shoulder, marched him up to Golgotha, nailed his hands and spiked his feet, pierced him in the side, and he did it all just for us. And because we are struggling with some issues and some situations and some circumstances, we seem to forget he did it all just for us. With my Lord and your God went down in a, in a borrowed tomb, laid him there for three days. But on the third day morning, got up with all power in his hand, saving power, raising power, healing power, delivering power, all power in his hand. What I need you to understand. When the body of believers begin to tolerate sin in the church, they are lowering their standards and compromising the church's witness. I wonder if you understand that. So we don't compromise. If the word says it, we believe it. We stand on it. We don't compromise. Christ commands the church at emphasis, working hard, being patient, resisting sin, suffering patiently, without quitting. Every church should be like this. Hello, Star of Hope. It's time to get on the march. It's time to start being what we're supposed to be in the Lord. Amen and amen. That might be one that's this morning that has, has decided to make Jesus his choice. Who, who are tired of bumping his head against the wall. Who, who don't realize that there is somebody can fix your situation. You can come by letter, by Christian experience. You can come as a candidate for baptism. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is you can come. And I, I need to tell you, he's standing there. And he's saying, whosoever will, let him come. That might be one. Virtually. I need you to understand that he's waiting. He's able to do abundantly and above. Anything you can even think of. But nothing will ever be the same. But we serve a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. And his desire is that no man go to the pit. That might be one. Give your life to the Lord today. He can fix your brokenness. He can heal your heart. He can fix your mind. Amen. I hope something was said. I didn't understand it when I looked at it, but now I think I do. The church must be the witness he needs us to be. Amen and amen. Let us pray. My Heavenly Father, we come thanking you, Lord. Asking, Lord, that you continue to look on our church. Dear Lord, from our pastor to, Lord, to each and every one in the pew members. We ask, Lord, that you Build us up where we're torn down. Stitch it together with your love. Dear Lord, we ask that you go with us and stand by us. We need you. We cannot get along without you. Continue.
even give our pastor as he continues to feed us. But Lord, let us be, let us have a mind to receive and apply that your word will be fruitful in our lives. Lord, I ask that you go with us and stand by us. Continue to love God and protect us. This is my prayer. With uplifting hand, may the grace of God's holy communion rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forever. And they all said amen, amen, and amen.